All right, ladies and gentlemen, after all of that wandering around and talking, it looks like we're going to finally get into some combat. We're going to move out. We can see how to start off combat. We right-click on a target to switch between active and uh, passive modes, basically. Two rotating arrows will appear over the target that I'm currently attacking. Various actions, such as spells and weapon skills, will be formed by clicking on the buttons, obviously. Hot button, MMO. Most actions take magic or tactical points. Basically, it depends on if you're a caster or if you're a fighter, really. Uh, all fighters will have 1,000 TP. That doesn't change. It refreshes at a constant rate. I don't know if there'll be gear eventually that'll change that, but and that's how it is. And you'll have various recast times of your abilities. So you'll have to pay attention to your resources and your refresh timers. Disciples of Magic and Disciples of War, who specialize in ranged attacks, such as archers, are best suited fighting at a distance, and the range and radius of the action can also be confirmed through help windows of each action I have. So before we move on, uh, let's point on, let's go ahead and get out of here, and I'll show you a little bit of the interface that's going to be kind of important as we move on. And part of that is because I want to get my potions out, so in case I need them. I want to show this here in the lower right-hand corner. This is cool. I've never seen this in a, a game before like this, and I kind of like it. This is a small representation of your character and your inventory. So if I click on this one on the left, it brings up my character sheet, and what you'll notice is that all these items here reflect the green dots over here. So these green dots are all my equipment, so I can see that I'm missing a headpiece, I'm missing a belt, I'm missing all these other items over here. If I click here, this is my inventory, you can see I've got two items. They are both blue, which represents a stackable item, and they are not at maximum stacks. There's 99 in uh, total in a stack. Once that gets maximum stacks, I believe that color will change. So what I want to do is go ahead and put my potion down here, should I need it, while I'm fighting. You have plenty of inventory. My god, this is why I'm so happy not to be playing a free-to-play game. I have plenty of inventory. One, two, three, four, five... Or one, two, three, four, right? So one, two, three, four. And you've got a inventories for separate crystals. So all those crystals I've been getting, this is where they're going. They're not taking up inventory spots. So I've got 20 earth, I've or five earth, 20 wind. I can click on it and make it an item should I need to interact with it. So it's per, they've thought of that. It goes from shards to crystals to clusters. And you also have a, of course, a key items inventory. So nothing takes up space that shouldn't. They have really looked at the way this is done in other games and maximized your inventory potential. I have a hundred inventory slots, and that's crystals aside and gear. Just so you know, your gear is here in an armory chest. This doesn't take up inventory either. Each one of these, as you can see, this is the inventory for each slot. If I go to main hand, that's how many main hand items I can carry with me at a time. And this is important, because this is how you'll change classes. Your class is based on your weapon. So if I go down here to rings, we can see I do have a ring. This is my crafting ring. It does give me magical defense and regular defense. Even though it's a crafting ring and it gives me CP, I'm not going to use that for this class but I can use it to give myself defenses. It says all classes, so I don't have to worry about it. It doesn't say only usable to um, Disciples of the Land, so I can use it as a, a warrior class. So I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to right-click, and I can equip. There you go. It goes on one of the two ring slots, and you can see down here the ring slot is updated. Now real quick, I'm going to put this over here just to see if it shows me the maximum. No, it doesn't. So let's just say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. So you've got 25 inventory slots per slot of gear. That is a ton of inventory. I should not have inventory issues. I don't see myself having inventory issues. Now, uh, one thing I kind of want to show, this is kind of neat. Uh, you can actually turn on and off the uh, view of your weapon. I think that's... Awesome. That's pretty cool. All right. Talked about enough, that enough. I've got my potions out. Let's go out. I am a Lancer. I will eventually become a Dragoon. So I have two abilities right now. Let's go ahead and go to Actions and Tactics. We can kind of look at this. You do have an auto attack in this. In 1.0, when this game first launched, you did not have an auto attack. You had to rely on pushing buttons. In this, you have an auto attack as well as buttons that you will push. Uh, limit break, that's kind of important to have in parties. I'm just going to put it down here for now. 
you can toggle through target wow they've given you all the actions you need here so here's only actions i'm going to get up to level 50 level 50 is the cap so i can see everything i can use right now and this is all for lancer i start off with true thrust this is a weapon skill with a three ohm range it has a 2.5 second recast so anything you do in this game has a global cooldown almost anything actually there are some instances that don't have a global cooldown so whenever i do something it's going to take me two and a half seconds between casts so combat in this game is is intentionally a little bit slower because of that so you have to wait at two and a half seconds now you can make macros for stringing attacks together but macros cannot do half of a second or a fraction of a second on the wait timer you can only do full seconds so if you do a macro you're going to be less efficient so here we've got two and a half second recast and it takes 70 tp so that's the thing I'm going to be I'm going to have to watch my resources because that's 70 TP that I'll have to be doing that I'll be using up every time I do this. And I'm going to spam this as much as possible because it delivers an attack with a potency of 150. So what does that mean? Well, what you want to consider is that a basic attack in this game has a potency of 100. Think of potency as a percentage of damage. So 100 potency is 100% damage. So this is 50% extra damage. So my auto attack will do one hit, and then this is going to do 50% additional damage. All right, so that's how this combat works. The other ability I got was Faint. This is a 80, a 80 TP cost. It delivers an attack with a potency of 120, but it also has the additional effect of slow. The slow lasts for 20 seconds. So what you can see here is already I have an ability that doesn't hit as hard. This is only going to do 20% additional damage compared to this 50%. It does cost more, but it slows the enemy down by 20% for 10 seconds. So I'm going to lead off with Faint, and then I'm going to keep using True Thrust until the creature dies or until I need to recast Faint. All right, so let's go ahead and get into combat so you can see that in action. And you can see all the mobs that I need to kill for a quest are marked with this little icon above them with that as you may notice is the quest icon so these guys I'm pretty sure do not aggro uh, in groups they don't link like if I click on it if they link you would see a little linking bar between them and they don't so let's just go ahead and show the basic auto attack if I right click I go into that stance there that red line shows that he's got aggro that's the same kind of line you're gonna see if they link together so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do my true thrust there you go. Quite a bit of damage. Hey, look, it even tells me about experience points. In the event, so this is important, in the event that multiple solo players attack the same target, the player who attacks first will always receive 100% of the experience points and items dropped. So you don't have to worry about enemies stealing your target. So if you sit there and you get the first attack off and somebody else comes by and helps helps or tries to grief you don't worry you're always going to get 100 percent experience now you might think okay well that's going to screw it up because what if people tag things and keep you from getting it well the players who follow will be rewarded based on the contribution to the battle so if you see a fellow player in need of a hand don't hesitate so what that means is if i'm going to go up and attack this creature and someone tries to grief me or let's say someone wants to help me and they're concerned about what experience they're going to get if i tag this monster and I only do like 10% damage. Another guy comes up and does 90%. He's going to get 90% of the experience and item probability. So there you go. They've come up with a fair system on it. Now that does kind of that that basically solves all the problems, right? Because you can tag a creature, you get full experience for it, and then someone else can kill it. Now, of course, this means that high-level characters can follow you around and help you kill stuff, but you know. Whatever, that happens. So, binding items. We know about this system, right? Uh, an item that you have equipped is now bound to me and can no longer be traded or put up for sale on the markets. Most items can be sold and traded freely before they are used in battle, crafting, or gathering. It's true regardless of whether or not they ha have been equipped. However, performing one of these three actions while equipping a new piece of gear will bind it, and that is preventing the sale. That is basically attacking, crafting. So, crafting gear can be bound. So, let's go ahead and see what got bound. Uh, this one is binding, and what I want you to see is if you look at uh, where it says condition and spirit bound, it says condition is 99%, spirit bound is only 1%, so this is binding, but it hasn't bound yet. Uh, what has bound to me, though, huh, it said something bound, but everything's at 1%, so I'm not entirely 
sure why it told me that. All right, so let's go ahead, and I'm going to go ahead and start off with slow. So there we go. You can see he, the squirrel is now attacking, uh, attacking, attacking a lot slower than before, and I'll just hit the, the true thrust. And you can see my TP goes up pretty quickly. So she's hitting that ladybug. I could assist there, helping out. And they got full experience, and I got a percentage of it. Not that they needed my help. So pretty much start off with the slowing thrust, and then true thrust immediately after. And then I could use true thrust again, but I'm not going to do it for now. You see, look at that. My TP came up before the battle ended. Now, if I were to spam the attacks, you'll notice that, yes, my TP might be in jeopardy over a long, prolonged fight. So I'll hit once, hit twice, and then a third time. But, of course, out of battle, you'll notice that it goes up very quickly. So it's not really... I'm really not worried about it. So targeting tab does work. It is tab target, left click. I like the fact that the circle on the ground shows you the facing of a monster, so if you're not sure what direction that monster is facing, you can tell. And this allows you to maneuver based on your abilities. Like, I'm going to have abilities that does more damage on its flank, more damage at the back. For now, I don't have any of those. So I'm going to go ahead and do slow. And I'm going to talk a little bit about this battle interface here, so you can get a look at some of it. So the bar at the top is, of course, the bar. You can see there's an arrow pointing to who its target is. And I can click on that to target. Now, if I go ahead and slow it again, you'll see there's the slow icon. And it lets me know that their attacks are being increased. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't say the exact amount. But all the information you need here is it shows me the level. This icon here is an H that is honestly just the marking of the creature. <coughs> Pardon me. That's like saying creature A, creature B, creature C. Now these letters will be shown to everybody. So if you want to coordinate with a party, you can say, all right, attack creature A, attack creature B, and everybody will know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, oh, look at this. Down in the lower left, I've got three animal skins from killing that monster. That is another thing I like about this game. Looting is instantaneous. Because you have so much inventory space, they just instantly give you the loot. I don't have to click on it. I don't have to click on the creature to pick its body. I don't have to click on a little thing that says any items I want. Now, if I were in a party and it was a high-quality item, it would probably give me a... It will give you a need for greed system like many MMOs do. But in this case, I'm solo, so it doesn't matter. Now, what's important about this item is the animal skins are obviously a crafting material, but there's this little icon here. That means it's a high-quality item, so we're going to learn a little bit about that. When you've obtained a high-quality item, so uh, they can be identified by the icon as well by the special mark. High-quality gear will often have better stats than normal-quality items, while high-quality materials used in synthesis will sometimes yield better results. These features make them more attractive to prospective buyers, resulting in higher selling prices. High-quality items cannot be stacked with normal-quality items. So it's letting you know that, hey, there's you've got normal-quality, you've got high-quality, and they will be separate from each other just by nature of that. Uh, that we can see crafting materials do take up normal inventory. But I've got 100 inventory spots, so I'm not concerned. And I will eventually get a retainer. So, ground squirrels, uh, we can see that the icon is gone. I don't need to kill them anymore. I'm going to be mindful of this guy. He is a treant sapling who is level 12. I think I want to avoid him. Thankfully, he doesn't seem to aggro. Doo -doo -doo, just walk right through. There is no collision. Hot button MMO at its core, so there's no collision or anything like that. So I've killed all the, the squirrels that I need, so we'll go ahead and start killing some ladybugs. Now, it looks like I don't have to be mindful of the auto attack timer. Because it looks like immediately following my attacks, if the auto attack is supposed to happen, it will. So that's good to see, because there was some... I think in 11 you had to be a little bit mindful of that. You had to wait for your auto attack, or you might miss out on some damage. Of course, you spam abilities in this game a lot more than you did in 11. Alright, so I've got Slay the Ladybugs, but I still need more of the oil. So I fulfilled the Lancer quest. You want to hit it? Go ahead. 
See, a lot of people I don't think realize that that tutorial pops up, but people tend to turn it off. This is why I said leave the pop-ups on. And the reason is you're going to learn little things like that. So I'm going to help this person. They're going to get full experience, and I'm going to get a fraction of it. But I'm going to gain the item I need. And that's why I'm glad I'm leaving those on, because I know MMOs. I'm, I'm an MMO veteran. I was doing hardcore raiding in WoW. But every MMO has little things, little tricks, that are different. And the looting in this game and the experience sharing is one of those things that is a little different than most. Alright, so we're done here, and it looks like I can have to go back to Old Gridania. But I do have a quest turn in over here, and another quest afterwards. And this is another interesting part about the game. It looks like one of them gone away. This is the Fate System. Breaking Bud. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's a reference to a show. Right? Right? So I'm going to go ahead and go this way to turn in the quest and get the next quest. And then we're going to go ahead and go over here to do this fate. So fates are kind of like public quests. Random events. Well, not so much random, but events in the world that happen. Supposedly there are hidden fates in the world as well that won't show up on the map like this. So I'm at Tree Speak Stables. Let's turn in. This is that item I got from that one Lollafell. I was going to say Taro Taro. Oh, I ain't looking for a chocobo, though one of the birds is become a proper bloody handful. No, it's a snaffle for a bridal that I'm after. Bugger's gone and vanished. The snaffles are made special, see? Fitty chocobo's beak, like, so replacing even a tiny snaffle like the one in your... <gasps> Bugger me, is that? Aye, it is the same one that we lost. Why is it so sticky? There are these teeth marks. So, yeah. Glutton. I don't know what foul beast gob you found this in, or what providence delivered you. Hero slew it to me today, but he my deepest thanks. You can finally get back to training that yellow feathered menace of mine. So cool, I get my first option here. So what is this? It is a bronze piece. It sells for 100 gil. These only sell for three, but they are items. So it looks like we've got, there's the caster gear, and this one is the Himpin tabard. So I'm going to lose two magic defense, gain five regular defense, but gain strength and dex. So I'm going to go ahead and want to do that. And with that, I've leveled and learned Vorpal Thrust. My Vorpal Blade goes snicker-snap. Alright, so now we learn about combos, because I've learned my first combo ability. Melee-oriented classes, such as Gladiator, Marauder, can change together their weapon skills uh, to deal additional damage or inflict additional enfeeblements onto their targets. This is known as a combo. Combos are not available to Pugilists, as this melee class employs a unique weapon skill chaining system. So, that's why I was talking about Pugilists are going to have kind of a very interesting way of fighting, and why I'm kind of interested in eventually learning one. I believe I have to learn Pugilist in order to learn Dragoon, so it's going to happen. All right, if a weapon skill can be chained with another, it will be indicated in the weapon skill's text under combo action. In the case of Vorpal Thrust, hey, we're talking about me! Um, <clears throat> to the right, if executed immediately after True Thrust, the potency will be doubled to 200 compared to a normal 100. Some weapon skills must be delivered from a, a specified direction to maximize damage. In these cases, maximum damage must be dealt for the action to successfully initiate a combo. So what that means is if you have something like this where it says delivered from behind, if I don't deliver that attack from behind and it has a combo action, I'm not going to get the combo action unless I do it from behind. Dirty. All right, when a weapon skill can be chained in a combo, its hotbar icon will be outlined with a flashing yellow border. The border will fade if the weapon skill is not used within a certain amount of time. Learn which weapon skills chain together maximize efficiency. All right, so with that, Baldwin has a quest for me, which gives me 500 experience and 135 gil. Got a mind to make yourself useful? Why don't you call some me me metalins? All right. Train a lot of chocobos here. Yeah, so youngins go wild when they get a sniff of metal and some of them throw their blooming riders. Let me tell you, I used to train a chocobo and she drops you in your head every time she sees a shadow. I've been getting nowhere with these birds lately. Could you use it to get rid of a few metalins? Being your debt. I don't know what accent I was going for there. It just happened. That's a kind of neat outfit. Look at that yellow hat. <clears throat> Okay, so with that, we're going to go into my armory chest. Now, I could also do that by, I believe... No, apparently I don't right-click on that. So I have to go into the armory chest here. That's fine. So, Hemp and Tabard 
is the Disciple of War requires level 5, though, so I can't use it yet. But what I'd like to point out, since this is the first item I've gotten, is there's a little dot. You see this little dot to the upper right-hand corner? That's a die system. So Final Fantasy XIV has a die system. You'll eventually unlock it somewhere around level 15 or something like that. I forget exactly what level. And you can then start dyeing your equipment. You just need to have the right items to do it. So yes, there will be items you'll need to gather for that. So just quickly looking here, I want to take a look at my character screen while I've got some downtime here. Aside from the standard hat and weapon here, and I can even go into combat stance if I so desire. I'm a little upset that I can't turn this 3D model here. <clears throat> All right. So let me see, morale, uh, in case for anyone's wondering, there is a PvP system where this is increases damage inflicted by other players. So we're looking at the, um, oh man, I can't remember the name that World of Warcraft calls it. Um, tenacity, I believe, is what they call it in that game. Uh, so let me see, we have physical resistance, you have sl uh, slashing, piercing, and blunt. You have defensive properties of defense, parry, and magical defense. And of course there's the elemental resistances that were changed according to my faith. All attributes, piety for maximum hit points, mind for magical healing, intelligence for magical damage, vitality for hit points, dex for ranged damage, so that pretty much only affects archers and bards at this time, as well as parry and block, so it does help me as a melee class, and then strength for physical melee damage, as well as parrying and blocking, so tanks will want to focus on strength as well. We have Accuracy, Critical, Determination. This is the one we talked about before with the ring. It affects the amount of damage dealt by both physical and magic, as well as the amount of hit points restored by healing spells. We also have Attack Power, Skill Speed. You can reduce Skill Speed. Um, that reduces the recast timer. Mental Properties, Attack Magic, Healing Spell, and all that. So we've got Profile. I can, I have, you can choose a title. I don't have a title right now. Shows your race, clan, gender, city, state, Name day, guardian, all that wonderful stuff. All my classes that I have, currently only Lancer, and if I mouse over it, we can see the experience. So if you're wondering what your highest level is or what the experience is for that class, you can just mouse over it and find out. And currency. So there will be different currencies right now, only guild. All right, so we've gone over that. Let's go ahead and grab the next quest. All right, ooh, I'm going to get 10 potions from this one. Really nice. If you want for work, then I have need an adventurer willing to dirty his hands. Hm? No, no, I speak not of dark deeds. I mean, only to have you deliver something. I myself could not dare venture deep into Twelveswood, but you seem more than capable of defending yourself. My colleague, Gillian, will furnish you with the item in question and provide all necessary directions. She should be somewhere behind the stables, supervising the field hands. Alright, quest link. Let's go ahead and go around to the side. Let's go ahead and just use my sprint. And this is why TP is important. As you saw, sprint does take all of your TP. So if you plan on moving quickly from place to place, just uh, keep in mind... Oh, interesting. Level 5. Doesn't look like they need my assistance. Alright. Vaughn actually found someone willing to lend a hand grab. One of them burlap sacks over yonder atop the crate. I taint the most convenient location to be sure, but where else can we store that stinking shite? No a visiting customer might patch a whiff, that's for sure. Deliver to Nolan down at Blessing Bud. That's west of here, in case you weren't wondering. Seems a conjurer friend takes his garden and pretty blooming seriously. So it looks like we have to deliver fertilizer. Shite. I wonder what was causing those uh, elementals to appear. Oh well, no skin off my nose. Let's look at the new ability I got while we're running. This is Vorpal Thrust. Instant cast, 2.5 recast, 60 TP cost. So you can see that it doesn't have as much TP cost as True Thrust, but its potency is only 100. So Vorpal Thrust might as well just be a normal attack. However, there's where they're talking about combo actions. True Thrust will combo into it to give it 200 damage. So if I do True Thrust for 150, then Vorpal for another 200. So that's 200 and, oh, well, sorry, two, 350 damage. So let's kind of look at this. So we have a Mightling here. Let's slow it. We'll use True Thrust. And you can see there's the, the glowing around it. And if I use it, that did 14 damage. And, uh, so quite a bit of damage from a 200% attack. Now keep in mind, I'm very low level, so this is 
going to, so you're not going to see a huge <clears throat> change to the damage. So it looks like I tagged this one first, but that archer is going to get a little bit of experience and things like that. So, oh, fate is nearby. Let's go ahead and go to it. And this is the fate system. It's short for full active time event. These public quests occur periodically in real time around Erosia, er, er, Erosia, and I join the fate. Now there it is. So there's the fate thing right there. This level five dish bubble. Let's move this to the side. So I'm going to help out. I'm going to slow it down. And I'm going to do my true thrust, and then I'm going to use my vorpal. So let's keep going. Let's true thrust, vorpal. All right, the slow dropped off, so I'm going to go ahead and put it back on. Now you can see here the slow was only for like two seconds. Now the problem here is I don't really know what affected that. So I'm going to try and put it back on. I think what it is is this. Heavy reduces movement speed, but I also think it has an innate slow on it. Alright, cool. So I just got some fate rewards. You can see I got some experience and some gill. Unfortunately, it was covered up by this. So let's take a look at this. The Fate System or Public Quest that occur periodically. And anyone can participate by simply showing up before it ends. When you sense a fate nearby, a message will appear on your screen. And the location is displayed on the map. Type of fate in progress can be identified by the map icon. Mousing over the icon will display the fate title. You will automatically join a fate the moment you cross the event threshold. At this time, the fate title objectives and the time remaining will appear in your duty list. If you are currently more than six levels over the recommended level, a level sync, a sync button will appear in your duty list. Press the button to automatically lower your level so that you can participate and receive the rewards. So that's the important part. Fates cannot be camped by high level characters. They have to lower themselves to the level of the fate. So you can't just have a level 60 sitting around waiting for it to come up and hit it in order to do the fate. They have to level sync. If they don't level sync, they can't interact with it at all. So that is something nice that the, uh, nice to see that they put that into consideration. That is new in this beta as well. So as you see, that's what we would have saw right there. This one in particular has a lot of experience, but not a lot of gill. So once it's complete, window displaying, your reward will be displayed. Rewards are distributed to all event participants and are based not only on success, but on individual contributions. So the more you do, the more you get. So you see the red ribbon with the ornateness to it is the best, and there's silver, and then the small green one. The more active you are in completing the events, the greater your contribution will be deemed. Contribution is indicated via gold, silver, bronze, metal, and window. All right. So it looks like we're over here. We're going to just go ahead and get some of these mightlings. I should probably do get the quest that's here while I'm doing this, just in case he also wants something from these mightlings. It's very important to pay attention to those, I think just because you never know when you can be getting more than one quest done at a time. Uh, oh, this is my turn in. Okay, is that what I think it is? Yes, it's your crap. I mean that literally. Praise be the elementals. I can't thank you enough for your kindness. This bounty of chocobo manure shall nourish the plants and ensure their growth. Right. Please relay my sincerest thanks to Vion upon the return to Treespeak Stables. Word of advice, wash your hands quickly, lest the cloying stench of feces linger. Yeah. Thanks. Now, one thing about this is in combat is I'd like to point out that you can move freely while attacking. It doesn't hinder you in any way. Now, a lot of people like to think... A lot of people like to think that moving around will prevent you from getting hit, but the truth of the matter is it, it, for auto attacks and things like that, I, I'm pretty confident that it doesn't. Now, some enemies are going to have abilities that they'll channel and they'll hit. And, and you're going to see, it's going to have the tells and things like that, where you'll see circles on the ground and things like that. They do do that. And so you can't avoid attacks in this game that are big. So there is some tr truth and validity to it, but not for the normal auto attacks. You'll Running around is not going to really do anything other than make you feel like you're doing something, which, you know what, I do that from time to time. I'll move around and just for the sake of it. Now, because of that, if you want to make sure you don't lose track of your target because of all the moving, you can lock your camera. By default, you can click one of the joysticks, I believe it's the right joystick, on a gamepad, or you can hit, for example, on your 10 key, hit the number 5. 
as long as you don't have numlock on. You'll see the camera locks, and I can move in a circle, and it will constantly keep that person locked on. Now, you'll notice when you move backwards, you don't move backwards as quickly as forwards. So if you ever need to get away from an enemy, you either want to unlock... Well, unlock won't do it. You basically want to turn around. With the camera locked, you notice I can't turn around fully. So, if you have to worry about running away from something, turn around and run away. That's the important thing on that. So, let's do this. What do we have? Thank you for the help. Get back to training the young birds. Check about the skittish by nature. See, training them takes a deal of patience. And don't make the task any easier. The soldiers' adventurers tend to ride them towards danger rather than away from it. I anyway, wrote, grateful for the help. It's a small token of our gratitude. With that, he's got another quest for me, actually, uh, with decent experience in Gil. Haven't forgotten that you helped us out with the Mightland, speaking of which. And if you got a bit of time spare, could trouble you to gather some efforts. You can find him living in a tangled undergrowth near Blessed, but don't be surprised if the presence attracts starving ladybugger to you. Rather fond of the wee velcro, you see. When you gather the aphids, deliver them to Captain Gutton, other than Etat Spire. Tell him Tree Speak Stable sends its regard. So this is your standard quest. You're going to go around. It's going to lead you from place to place. So I'm going to do this and end up having to go up north and quest all around here. Before I get too involved in these quests, I want to do my Lancer quest. And unfortunately, the, the next one I need for Fungars isn't here. I have to go to the other Shroud. So if I go back into Old Gridania and go down into New Gridania... Yeah, there it is. The Central Shroud is where I want to be. And this is where I will start doing the next quest. So I'm not going to go too far with this. Let's do this turn in. Did I neglect to inform you the sack's contents? I apologize. All right, I knew what the contents were. <clears throat> it would certainly explain why you agreed to help with countless others turn their noses up at the idea, so to speak. Well, it's done is done. Please accept this for your troubles. All right, so potions. And with that... I am level 5. Hey, look, sentries are level 35. High level guards, eh? They are there to make sure that adventurers don't die. Alright, with level 5, I didn't gain any new abilities. So, what I want to do is go over here to actions and traits. Yeah, you know, we're going to go into actions and kind of show off. You'll notice we can at least see what levels I get. So the next item I get won't be until level 6. And then after that won't be until 8. So I'm getting like every other level. 6, 8, 10, 12. And then after that, 18. So that's 6 levels later. Now, eventually I'll get a job which will fill in some of it will fill in some of these later on. But for the most part, that's how this is going. Uh, levels will play an important role elsewise. You're not going to get a skill every level, so... Yeah, sometimes leveling up, it's like, oh boy, I leveled, I didn't get anything. But, in this case, I did get something. I got more gear that I can wear. So... Oh, that's good. If you left-click on an item, it will automatically open this gear slot over here, the uh, chest for you. So, this is going to give me some more defense. I'm going to go ahead and equip it. And there we go. And you can see there's the, the little icon matches the color. It's I thought it was black, but it turns out it's a dark blue. That's kind of cool. So this is my new gear. I'm going to hold on to the pre-existing item. Because eventually, I believe I'm going to want to get this spirit bound in order to gain some materia out of it. Now, we haven't learned about materia yet, but that will be important. It's also not worth too much at this point in time. So what I want to do now is I want to go to the other gate. So I don't have to travel through all this. I just want to go down to the White Wolf Gate instead. So what I need is... Oh, there it is. This little bug eh? And it looks like... Oh, let's try the Blue Badger Gate. That should be Central Shroud. Okay, very good. And when it loads, we'll take a look at the map, make sure that we're actually in the right location. 
Uh, indeed we are. In fact, you can see there is the Way of the Lancer and the Population Control right there, showing you the area of these quests. Now, they are the same quests, but you can see that it's pretty much a wide area. For why it's showing it as two different areas, not sure, but, you know, not a big deal. See a bunch of archers here. So, here you're only going to see archers, you're only going to see lancers, and you're only going to see... Uh, Conjurers. I wanted to say white mages, because, you know, that's what they become, but right now they're conjurers. Ah, uh, here we go. Forest Fungars. This will be pretty, pretty quick and easy, so I'll go ahead and just kill what I need. Just kind of show this one real quick, since I'm, I'm pretty much the same thing over and over again at this point, but I'm pretty much just True Thrust, Vorpal Thrust, 1-2-1-2. One, two, one, two. I'm not even bothering with the slow, because you can see that my hit points are hardly ever dropping. So I'm just running around, True Thrust, Vorpal. It does more damage, it's quicker this way. Honestly, the slow is nice, but I only ever worry about it uh, when I'm going to fight something a little more intimidating. Now what I'd also like to point out is, up here not only does it show the area of my quest, but you might also see the little orange dots represent where all the enemies I need to kill are. So that's something that I mentioned in Dragon's Prophet that that game did, and so it looks like this game is following suit with that. So it's, And that's honestly kind of nice, because it, it, it's nice to know where my next target is going to be. I can basically take a quick glance in the upper right-hand corner and see, hey, I need to go in this next direction. This is kind of a cool cave, isn't it? Look at that waterfall. Interesting. There's something in there. I bet there's a quest that I'm going to eventually have to take to go in there. Alright, so with that, I've finished my Lancer quest, quite honestly, and we're done here. I can go down here and continue there, but I really want to complete the Lancer quest. It's very important I get this done and I do it quickly, because I want to eventually unlock the leaves. That is something what you want to do right away. So when you're doing your quests, try and get your quests done for your particular class as soon as you can. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use the return spell. A little bit of hovering, casting. And then I'll use the, fur the crystal to go further to the Lancer's Guild. Meanwhile, at the Legion of Doom, I, I mean the Lancer's Guild. Alright, squirrels are dealt with. Yes, I'm pleased to see if you've proven yourself useful. What's that? You wonder what happens to adventurers who fail to complete such trifling tasks. Why, such sluggards soon find that there is no place for them within the city. And where do they end up after leaving Gridania? Well, you shall hear the truth of that before long. <clears throat> Alright, great. So I can go ahead and grab my boots for my class. Oh my goodness. No boots. I like this. High boots. Real high boots, eh? Alright, so this one's going to have the same kind of dark color. Looks like this one's going to be black. I could be wrong, though. Strength and dexterity with some defense. Losing a bit of magic defense. Oh my goodness, where are my pants? Uh. Alright, so, boots. Now we can talk to my guildmaster. I trust you've learned something of the essence of our art. A lancer learns best when he is doing, each thrust making him stronger. Such things as strategy and technique will come in time. And never forget courage. Without it, you cannot hope to realize your potential. Your look betrays no hint of doubt. I would have you take with you this hunting log. It bears the names of the creatures against which a lancer might hone his skills. To be sure, there is no single way to master our art. The log serves to guide you, should you find yourself in need of direction. That will be all for the present. Now... Take up your weapon, sally forth, and cut a path for yourself. When next we meet, I hope to see you stronger for your time out in the world. The next Lancer quest will be available from Yawain upon reaching level 5. So I've already hit level 5, so that's just letting you know that if I were to do his quest early, I still would have had to gone up to level 5. So it behooves you to pick up the quests in town and to get your experience there as well to make this part a little bit quicker as well. So complete it, I've got my food. The hunting log, this is one of the most important things of the game. Now, you one character can be every class. You can make multiple characters, but one character can still be every class. So, why would you want to make other characters? Well, if you wanted to make another race, honestly, maybe you 
want to be a black mage, but you don't want it to be a human like mine, you could make it a Lollifel or something like that. There, there's reasons why you would make other classes, but uh, or other characters, but none of them are out of necessity, really. So, when you can be every class, what happens is, when you do the quest like I just did, those quests are no longer available. So if I were to go and be an archer, for example, uh, I would lose all these quests that I just did, and so I would have no way of really getting quick levels through questing. So that's where this hunting log comes in. So the hunting log is a record of your completion of tasks and following and slaying certain creatures. By completing these tasks, you will earn rewards and unlock new challenges. The log can be accessed via personal logs found in the main menu or by pressing H. Once the log is open, you can select a class and difficulty to view the available challenges for the rank. Each challenge is marked with a class name and number, such as Lancer 1. Below the name and number, you will find a target as well as how many of the target you must defeat. Hovering over the target name will display one of the areas in which the target can be located. So not only will it tell you what you have to kill, but it'll tell you where you can kill it. So it's not just going to leave you hanging in the breeze. Targets indicated in your hunting log will have a special icon on their display name, making it easier to locate them. So this icon right here, that's very important because it means you still have more to kill before you can complete your hunting log experience. So we're going to go ahead and go to personal logs, hunting logs. This is how you're going to level up new classes more efficiently. So I'm going to go out and notice I have already killed some of these things, the squirrels, the fungars, and the ladybugs. But if I go back out and kill three of them, I'm going to get extra 75 experience. Uh, 75 experience isn't that great right now, I'm already level 5, but for a starting class, when you have no other quests to do, this is important. The other thing will be, again, leaves. I keep talking about that. Well, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to go over that until about level 10. That's right around when you... Uh, I think it's maybe 12, actually. I haven't unlocked them before, I've only read about them, so I know how important they are. Uh, so that's why I'm going to try and get to them as quickly as I can. Now, you see there are other classes, I won't get their logs until I unlock them. So I can go out and do these. Each of these will give me a reward. Now, once you complete a full page of these, now you can see as you go on, these get higher and higher, like killing uh, three tree slugs will give me 1,700. Completing a page will also give you a reward. So up here you'll notice if I complete all 36 challenges, I get 2,500 experience. So you get a decent experience uh, amount for completing each individual one plus a full page. And you can even filter it to show what's done or what's incomplete. So this is a very nice system that rewards you for going out and killing, and helps alleviate a little bit of the killing grind. So, Spear the Fearless. Here I'm going to get a new weapon, that's gratis, and then I can choose one of different equipment options. Now I've already got a body armor, but this one it looks like it's going to give me a bit more experience, or a bit more defense. It's going to be strength and skill speed. Skill speed is kind of nice. But I don't entirely need that. It's plus four defense. Let's see what else. I'm going to get a leather eye patch from another quest I'm about to turn in. So we'll see about that. And the gloves I'm pretty sure I'm also going to get. I also got, notice these boots, not as important because I already have something equal. There's no pluses or minus. I have strength and dexterity. Now the problem is it doesn't show me the benefits of the subclasses there. Like defense and magic defense. You'll notice here that defense and magic defense, or in this case, let's look at this, this actually has changes. It'll show you the, defense in, the change in defense and magic defense. What it doesn't show you is the difference in the bonuses. Notice as this has strength plus one, dex plus one. Well, if I go to my current gloves, I don't have that. I don't have anything on it. So this is not telling me what I'm going to gain or lose. <clears throat> Same with this. This is strength and dex. I don't, well, I already have strength and dex. Well, what about this, this body armor? Notice that this also doesn't say a Disciple of War or all classes. It is specific to Gladiator, Marauder, Lancer, Paladin, Warrior, and Dragoon. Strength and skill speed, huh? Well, what do I have? I have strength and dex. So I don't really know exactly what I'll be gaining and losing there. I know I'll be dropping dex for skill speed. I don't exactly need dex because it's parrying. That's kind of nice. But this is going to give me defense, so I might as well get the skill speed in order to attack faster. So as of right now, it's kind of hard to theorycraft exactly what's going to be better because you don't get a really good judgment of what is going to change. What you do, the, do see, though, is, of course, the condition. Uh, you can see with Spirit Bound. You can also see who repairs it. An armor of level 1 can repair it, or I can go to a merchant, of course. also tells you what you need to repair it and how much the quick repairs would cost. So, all right. We're going to go ahead and accept this quest. Well, lastly, just so you can see, the reward here is 5 tin pieces, 25 gil apiece. 
I take from your presence that you have gained a measure of familiarity with your weapon. Good. You are ready to begin the next phase of your training. You will recall my telling you that it takes no small amount of courage to be a lancer. Now, in general terms, courage is the strength to do something which one finds unnerving. However, a lancer's notion of courage is not so simple. Having first drawn a distinction between courage and recklessness, he then divides the former into two aspects. I would have you learn each with spear in hand. The first is composure. When outnumbered in battle, a lancer may choose his composure and may lose his composure and succumb to panic. Should this happen, all of his training will swiftly flee his mind and he will struggle to overcome opponents whom he would ordinarily have bested with ease. He will, in short, contribute to his own defeat. If you wish to become a lancer in sooth, in sooth, you must learn to maintain your composure at all times. Do this, and you will be able to call upon every alms of your strength and skill when it matters most. And so, to your first task. To the riverbanks of the Central Shroud are home to Vilken, known as Yazons. Fiercely territorial, the creatures will attack anyone who strays too close, making them the bane of fisher folk. They typically fall upon their prey en masse, bearing all avenues of escape before closing in for the kill. What must go through the mind of their victim in that instant? Panic? Despair? Be sure to tell me upon your return. Needless to say, I would have you brave such an encounter. Take this sack, a decidedly noisome bait, and use it to lure the ever-ravenous creatures out of their nest. It may be that only one curious yawzon appears, but what if two or three follow the scent? Let us see how you fare then. Go now, my young lancer, and learn what it means to fight with composure. Alright, so I get to go out and use bait to kill monsters. Now that's back in the central shroud, which is more to the south. So what I need to do first, though, is I do have another turn-in quest, so if you're doing this, please don't forget that you do have another turn-in quest. Down here, population control at the Archer's Guild. You can go there now. Well, well, the fledgling adventurer returns, and none the worse for wear by the look of it. Ha! You may have you. You may yet be of use to this nation. On behalf of Gurdani, I thank you. Alright, so this is where I'll go ahead and I'll grab my eye patch to give myself some strength and dexterity. Alright, well that's it for the turn ends. Looks like I'm going back out to Central Shroud. And with that... A leather eye patch. Let's zoom in a little bit. Take a look at it. Gives me some defense and magic defense because I don't currently have a helmet. There it is. Colors matching, too. Look at that. It looks like all the colors are matching. It's kind of cool. Look at me with the sexy, sexy eye patch. Hee <laughs> yar. Alright, upon my way back, I've decided to finish off my hunting log. Or not finish off, but at least start my hunting log. You can see that each of these fungar are worth 60 experience. And there's a little icon above them. So I've killed two Fungar for 60 experience. Let's go ahead and kill another one. Oh, well, it's okay. He tagged it first. It's all right. So what did that one give me? 75 plus 25. Oh, I must have chained. And I got 360 experience for the hunting log, it looks like. Let's just go ahead and quickly look at that. 360. So there were 60 apiece. So the reward is much greater than the individual kills. And what I did there is because I'm completing this, I got a chain. So what's a chain? A chain is killing something uh, roughly of your level and killing it in rapid succession. So level 3, level 4 is right around the right level. And you can chain, I forget how high the chain goes, but a chain 5 is typically considered really good. You can get, I think, double experience at about chain 5. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to try and attempt to kill some things very quickly to show that off. So I've got this Fungar here. Taking him out. Now my Vorpal is still high, so we're going to go ahead and use that. we got 65 for that Fungar, so let's kill this Ladybug who's level 4. All right, 65 experience points. Now I got level six. It looks like level four might not allow it to happen. So in this instance, it looks like I'm not getting chain experience. I'm just gonna go ahead and try it again here. All 
Yep. Not getting any additional experience. Oh well, I got a ladybug here to kill. So let's look at Keen Flurry while I'm killing this ladybug. This is a 90 second recast. And this is a parry rate increase by 40%. So it's not a damaging ability. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this up on my bars for defense. And what I'll need to do is eventually unlock one of my horizontal things. I'm just put my limit break over here. So Keen Flurry, 40% parry rate for 20 seconds. So it's a defensive cooldown, basically. So what we'll do is we'll go over here, hit the ladybug, and we'll go ahead and activate it. We'll see if it activates the global cooldown. Nope, no global cooldown. So your defense abilities, you don't have to worry about triggering that. So if you pop a, def a defensive cooldown, you can immediately... Interesting. You can go immediately into one of your abilities, so and that's quite nice. Now, you do have a cooldown when you use regular abilities, so you have to be mindful of that. Oh, a fate has appeared. Clever girls. What are we, fighting raptors? Oh, hello. Oh, my. All right, th that's the important thing to watch out for. Oh, my goodness. Who led these things onto a bridge? So be mindful of these. Yeah, I'm going to constantly move. Oh my goodness. This is crazy. This is Sparta. I'm going to tag another one to try and get more experience out of it. So you see I'm just constantly spamming oops, my abilities. I am getting hurt. I just popped a potion because I am hurt. I'm trying to get through all of these without getting too hurt, too hurt here. It is kind of hard at times to tell when I'm taking uh, too much damage. Just stay out of the damage circles as much as possible. Pop potions when needed. Now on the upper right hand corner you can see the fate menu. Now tag anything that's purple, that's definitely what I need to do here. I will get percentages based on it. Now come on, tab. In the upper right hand corner you can see it's a level 5, it gives you a little bit of information about it, and you can see there's a bar that is the completion. So as we kill these things, the bar goes up until it finishes, and there was a time limit until it, until you uh, couldn't do it anymore. So it looks like I got gold, 560 experience, and some gil. Excellent. Now here is where I could definitely get some chains. So we see here we have a whole bunch of black Fs and some water sprites. So if I take a bunch of these on at once, I might be able to get a chain. So let's go ahead and try that. Now because these creatures are a bit tougher, I'm going to go ahead and use my slow. Now what you may have noticed is when I use my slow, Vorpal Thrust was off combo. So if you're going to do a combo... Oh, hello. Well, they're teaching you right away how to avoid uh, abilities, aren't you? Aren't they? It's some interesting. All right. So that right there, we're basically fighting tougher monsters now that are going to require you to pay attention to some of their abilities or you might take a bunch of damage. And so the game is choosing to do that earlier rather than later. So there we go. That was a chain one with plus 20 experience. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pop my defensive cooldown just because. Let's go ahead and slow him down and then perform my combo. What did I get? I got another chain for 24% addition, uh, additional experience. And then we can see over here it'll tell me when the experience 97 experience, 30%. It didn't tell me what chain that was, so hold on, there's a level 5 over here. Is level 5 going to count? Let's find out. I want to know if one level below me will matter for chaining. Looks like it does. So I can't do a level below me. It has to be my level or above. So in this case, we can see I got a pretty decent experience. I got 20 additional experience, 24, then 30. 
So you're going to continue to gain more and more experience, and chain fives are just really nice if you can manage to get them. In this case, again, we're, we're looking at open beta, so there's a lot of people in the area, and so there's going to be a lot of people... You know, everybody's fresh. You know, we're on a whole new MMO, a whole new... It's a brand new release. Well, so one thing I can do, too, to avoid that, just, you know, if you're used to not used to MMO conventions, you can run through an enemy rather than dodge to the side if you want to. So for my quest for my Lancers, this is where I'll be using the foul-smelling bait. We'll just go ahead and right-click and use it. And it would see what this is designed to do. Is to kind of teach you how to deal with multiple monsters at once. So again, the game is kind of teaching you without deliberately stating that it's doing so. I mean, the the instructor himself, the guildmaster, is saying he's teaching you, but it's not just about teaching in a story perspective. It's teaching from a gameplay mechanic perspective. It's like, hey, you're going to have to fight more than one monster. And so you, it, that's what they talk about, composure. I don't have anything to stop one of the enemies. I don't have anything to sleep them, to sap them, or anything like that. So the idea here is just stay calm, pick a target, focus on him, and let his friend hit me, but, but just kind of take the hit. So I'll go ahead and activate my defensive cooldown. Oh, I can use my Vorpal now. Let's go ahead and slow. And that's pretty much what this is all about. Okay, die already. Alright, cool. So I have gotten some hunting logs done, and I've gotten my Dragoon quest done. Or Dragoon. I keep saying Dragoon because I want to be a Dragoon. Alright, it's time go to go back to the Lancers then. Now, uh, what I probably should have done before coming out here, I'm just trying to get the Lancer done real quick. But what I could have done is go down here to these quests. I'm pretty sure there's a quest over here to have me kill monsters in this area. But I will worry about that as I get to actually questing in the zone. So let's go ahead and go back. Before I go back to the Lancers, I completely forgot that I have a quest turn in at the Conjurers, the Essential Oils quest, which is going to be, give me another piece of armor. So the turn in for the, the Lancer quest that I'm about to do, I think is supposed to be a substitute. If I already did these quests, then the Lancer quest is supposed to say, here's a choice of armors. If you didn't get any of these armors, you can get one now. And they also give you a weapon. So in this case, since I'm doing all the quests for the first time, I'm going to go ahead and get all the armor pieces I need, so I'm going to pick the one item that I need the most. Or the gill. We'll see. Alright, six oils, hand over. Everything appears to be in order. Ceremony will please, uh, proceed as planned. I'm grateful to the elementals for delivering you to us. Pray accept the small token. Alright, so let's go ahead and get the fingerless gloves and complete. All right, let's go ahead and go in to our chest, go to the gloves. We'll see if we get some defense, lose some magical defense, get some strength and dex. Once again, there we go. Everything is matching in color. I imagine that's by design. I feel like Old Snake. Maybe not Old Snake. Snake. Otacon. Do you believe that love can be found in Eorzea on the battlefield? I'll let you know when I figure it out, Snake. Snake! You should have called him Snake. Totally should have done it. Whatever! <laughs> to, the, to the Lancers! Oh, hello. Really, I could kill for a decent pair of pants right about now. Welcome back, Malik, and well done. I trust you now understand uh, in terms of dire need. No amount of strength or skill with a spear will avail the Lancer who lacks composure. You are now ready to learn the second aspect of a Lancer's courage, resolve. When faced with a terrible foe, a Lancer may succumb to fear and self-doubt. Should this happen, he will become defensive, and in seeking to cover his weakness, surrender his greatest strength, namely his capacity to attack. A Lancer who fears to attack is not but a man holding a pole. His spear may well as be a broomstick for the good it will do him. It is not, and will never, be a shield. 
That you may learn the truth of my words firsthand, I bid you go to the Central Shroud, to an area adjoining abandoned dungeon known as Spirit Hole. Since the Calamity, that neck of the Twelveswood has become a veritable menagerie of fearsome fauna. There you'll find three collapsed pillars, which have become a haunt for fell creatures. You are to put them down. Hmm, what manner of fiends can you expect to encounter? Ha! To reveal that would be to defeat the purpose of the lesson, my young Lancer. I'll say only this, if you face those foes with a lance's resolve, you will surely emerge the victor. Once you have completed the trial, pray report to Jillian in the entrance hall. She has grasped the two aspects of courage, albeit with some trouble. Though I doubt you will encounter similar difficulties. Her struggle has furnished her with certain insights, which I think would benefit from hearing. A lancer learns best when he is doing, I, but the wisdom of his seniors is not entirely without worth. Go now, Malik, do as I bid you. Alright, Central Shroud. Central Shroud was where I was questing earlier, is it not? No, that was south. So I still have my quest over there. Very well, back to Central Shroud we shall go. Uh, we are learning, we are learning, we are doing. So let's just take a look here, and here is where we are. Uh, let's find out where the quest will take us. Ah, here it is, right down here. Spear of the Fearless to the far south. So I will head that way. So this has been pretty good. This is getting me to level 6 on my Dragoon. And we're moving on. Uh, hopefully this one uh, was more entertaining. So you got to see a little bit of the combat, how the combo system works. So we can see as a Dragoon, I have access to a defensive cooldown at this point. I also have access to one a debilitating attack, a debuff. So I have a slow and then some combo abilities. And then as I level up, to kind of show this off, we'll see where we go. We will get some abilities which will start requiring positioning. So impulse drive, which will require me to attack from behind. So I'm going to have some different strategies I'm going to have to start using as a Dragoon to make some of these things happen. So we'll see that as I level up. Alright, so that is it for now. Level 6 Dragoon, I'll be going out to the Blue Badger Gate and moving my way towards my Dragoon quest. Thank you for watching. We'll see you on the next one.